What's up, that church? How are you? What a great day it is. How exciting it is to have power go out and stuff right before the service. Uh, found out someone hit a power pole just down the street from us. So here's what I want to do. Let's just take a second. Let's pray for that person. Let's pray for their family. Let's pray for that whole circumstance. I know when someone's in an accident, it's so scary. And, and let's, just, let's just pray for them. So let's just take a second right now. Father, we are, we're grateful that we can call on you. And God, you know every circumstance and, and you're able and so I pray for this person, whether it was a family or an individual or whatever that, that had this accident. God, I pray, for, um, I pray for their healing. I pray for the caregivers that will surround them. Um, I pray for the circumstances that, that surround this wreck, God, because I know there's no, so much pain that can come out of that. But at the same time, God, I pray, Lord, that your glory might be shown, even in a circumstance like a car wreck. God, and I pray that, Lord, you'll accomplish things through this, God, that you couldn't have otherwise. Thank you, God, um, for giving us a reminder um, of how we have the opportunity to pray, Lord, and, and thank you for reminding us how much we enjoy electricity. Um, Lord, we just love you, and we celebrate your presence today in our life, God. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's, a, it's an incredible day. Last week was pretty cool, huh? Wasn't that neat kind of hearing, hearing from Kendall and get, having a chance to kind of see what's going on with Cabot? Isn't that neat? It's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just remember that all that's happening there is because of the work that's happened here. And there's so much that, that couldn't happen there without what God is doing here. And so it's just a, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing to be a part of that. You know, I believe that a church um, should be a reproducer, and we're reproducing, and that's important. Um, we're not on birth control. You know, we're trying to have babies. And uh, so, it's kind of, I don't know, that may not come in the next, next service, but, but I feel good about it. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so it's pretty cool. You saw the Camp United video, so I want to talk to parents of 6th through 12th graders, and I want to talk to 6th through 12th graders, okay? Camp United, you need to sign up for it. Don't let money be an obstacle. We're not concerned about that. We want to populate this camp. Camp is filling up really, really fast. Um, I cannot count on my fingers and toes how many young people, how many volunteers, how many young leaders have, been, have grown and developed out of Camp United. So I just want to say this. Mom, dad, mom, dad, talk to your kids. Get them there. Kids, talk to your mom and dad and say, hey, man, it doesn't matter. We don't, we're not worried about cost. We want you to be there because we believe the life change is one of the most important things that we have a chance to participate in. So, so let's get that done. Let's keep populating camp. Let's keep working towards camp. You're probably going to get a phone call from our team anyway, making sure. And uh, I just pray the Holy Spirit torments you until you get that 6th through 12th grader there. Because I promise you it's going to make a big difference in their life. And it'll make a big difference in your family's life. Um, just being able to take that three or four days and, and watch God do some, some great, awesome work in that. So um, this is our last week of Big Fat Mouth. Let me ask a question. How many of you realize that your mouth needs to go on a diet? Whose mouth needs a little, little diet plan? Me too. Me too. You know, it's funny when you prepare a message, you think, well, this person's coming in. They've got all the answers. Actually, what happens is God deals with me first. And then I come and, and I share with you what he's showing all of us. Because this is God's truth, not Scott's standard. Um, this is not the example that Scott always sets, but this is the, the example that God has set, and I'm trying to learn from that as well. Um, so, so we all have a little bit of mouth. This week we're going to talk about gossip, um, and it's going to be an incredible message. But I want to remind you, starting next week, we start a brand new series, and, and the whole month of June is going to be man month. That doesn't mean if you're a lady, you don't need to come be here, but bring some dudes with you if you can. And dudes, bring your dude friends with you. Um, the message series is called Bruh. Bruh. And we're going to take four guys from the Bible that you may not have thought about or studied before, and we're going to look at how they did something so ignorant that you would just want to go, bruh, what in the world were you thinking? And we're going to just learn how that, that God takes men 
and our mess and mistakes and can still make a masterpiece out of it. Um, it's going to be pretty amazing. So it's going to be an incredible story. I would encourage you to bring your friends who are unchurched, people around you that are maybe disheartened or depressed or, or discouraged. This is going to be a great series to talk about, guys. We, are, we do have Father's Day weekend coming up this next month as well, so just kind of be prepared for that. We're going to have some crazy stuff we're going to do. We're going to do some junk during the service for dads. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. But let's dig into this week, gossip. Gossip. Sometimes, I don't even think we talk about it in the church, do we? I mean, when was the last time you heard a message on gossip? But you know what's crazy? As we were preparing for this, this message, I never realized how many verses of Scripture that speaks directly to this particular issue, and we don't even think about it. Matter of fact, look at this verse, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 8. It says, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. In other words, you know what happens? Rumors, when you get used to, to slandering people or gossiping about people or spreading rumors about people, it, it kind of empowers us. I've got something to share. Maybe with the group of people that I'm with, I'm telling them something that they want to know about somebody that we, maybe together we don't like this person and so we get to talk about them. I think we even have rumor partners where people that we just love sharing junk with and they love sharing it back and we just get in this mode of just constantly passing around things that we shouldn't be passing around. And I think it brings to our attention this issue. So what, what is gossip? I'm going to give you a definition from, for gossip that isn't the Webster's angle, and it's not the world's angle, but it's the biblical angle. You, you know what gossip really is? The Bible never um, tells us what content we're allowed to share or not to share. But what the Bible teaches us is, is that when, I, when my heart isn't right with God and right with this other person, I have no right to share information about them with anybody else. That's gossip. It's gossip when, when I don't care about that person like Jesus cares about them, and, and I'm going to share information not to build them up, but to tear them down, or maybe to tear them down so I'm built up. That's gossip. Gossip is really an issue of my own heart. It's not really an issue of content. For years, people used to say, well, it's true, so it's not gossip. You know what? I, I, something that I remember being said to me some time ago is this, is that, you know what? Everything as a follower of Jesus that comes out of your mouth should be true. That's, that's true. Everything that, if, if I say, hey, Christ is my Savior and my Lord, and I follow Him, yes, everything that, should, that comes out of my mouth should be true. But not everything true should be shared. There's a lot of stuff that just doesn't need to be shared. It doesn't benefit someone else. And if your heart's not right with that person, you shouldn't share anything about them. If, you're not, if your heart's not in this that says, hey, I want to see their life benefit. I want to see them turn the corner. I want to see their character developed. I want to see them more like Jesus. If you can't say that, you have no right or no license to say anything about them at all. Which that means for a lot of you who have exes, you probably shouldn't talk about them, period. You know, if you have somebody you're mad at and you have anger against, you probably shouldn't share anything about them at all because your heart's not right towards them. That's gossip. That's gossip. You're not looking, for, looking out for them. You're not looking out for their benefit. You're not looking out at them or looking at them rather the way that Jesus looks at them, and that's a problem. Proverbs said, though, that when we get in the habit of sharing gossip, it's like a tiny morsel. It reminds me of this, this jar. Now, these are Reese's peanut butter cups, okay? These are tiny little morsels, okay? I want to be clear. This is not my jar. This jar belongs to the worship team, all right? And at one point, this jar was completely full. And you know what they did? They took this jar and they put it on the counter out in the common area where the worship team and all the technical people kind of hang out on Sunday. And it's for them. It's a benefit for them. I don't know why, but it is. But you know, they don't take it up afterwards. They leave it out there all week long. And so every time I go to the bathroom, there's this jar sitting on the counter. It's just like this. And it's going, "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every time I go by, and you know what? There's times when it's like an unusually stressful day, and I just got off the phone with somebody. I'm like, oh, my gosh, and, you know, something terrible. And I walk out of my office, and there that jar is, a jar of tranquility, <laughs> serenity, peace, and joy. And I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to eat one, because I'm sure, I mean, what is it? What could it possibly be? I mean, one of these is like, what, I don't know, 50 calories, 20 grams of fat. I mean, I don't know what it is. I need a nut allergy, y'all. But I, I don't know. But, but anyway, I, and I'll take that and I'll say, you know what I'm going to do? Because I've already eaten my tuna fish salad or whatever I've eaten for the morning, and it's long gone. And I'll eat one of these. And you know what happens the rest of the day? I'm haunted. My mind goes back. Here. Tiny little morsels. 
You know what the Bible says? The Bible says rumors are like that. What happens is, is you and I get so used to sharing this information that we have no license to share, share and we don't have the heart to share it, that we, it just becomes a habit. And you can't, just, you can't just share once. You start sharing this and that and more and more and more. And listen, what you don't realize is you're carrying out the work of, of our enemy, not the work of our Savior. You're destroying. You're not building up. You're not, you're not changing lives in a positive way. You're destroying lives in a very negative way. And so let's look at this a little bit and let's consider gossip. And maybe for a second, let's get serious about it. Because I think it's a lot bigger offense to God and it's a lot more problematic and troublesome in our lives than what we give it credit for. So who does gossip hurt? Let's walk through this. It's in your outline. First of all, gossip hurts the person it's spoken about. I would dare say there's not a single person in this room that has not felt the pain and the hurt of gossip. Isn't that true? I mean, haven't you been the subject of someone's malicious, you know, comments to someone else? I mean, I have. And, you know, as a pastor, especially of a church that's growing and doing things, um, I, I'm the, I, in the gossip part a lot, you know, and I can't tell you how many times people have come to me and said, hey, so-and-so was saying this about you. Is that true? I'm like, no. Um, but it happens a lot. But a few years ago, I was caught off guard. Um, a few years ago, we had a group of people that were leaving the church. You know, they were upset about something, you know, the flavor of the week. And so they're leaving. They're upset about something. And on their way out, they began to spread rumors about one of my kids. Gossip. Now, part of the rumor was, was kind of true, but the rest of it was, was really false. It's kind of like this. Your friends say, hey, you know, Johnny drives a blue car. And your enemies say, Johnny stole a blue car. You know, it's, there's a piece of truth in there. The car's true, but the rest of it's a lie. And it's kind of how this was. And they were planting these seeds as they were leaving. And, and you know what's funny is that I know you parents understand where I'm coming from. I was prepared for when people give me junk. I'm used to that. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't shy away from it. I'm fine with that. But then it affected my kids. And that was funny to me how I had to process through my head and how it affected me and how it affected my, my anger level. And even bitterness began to enter in. And I realized, you know what? I've got, I've got to let that go. But it's hurtful, isn't it? Here's what the Bible says. It says, a troublemaker plants seeds of strife. I mean, what are you putting in the ground in the relationships around you? Are you putting things in the ground that are breaking people apart, that are destroying people's character? Um, and it goes on, it says, a gossip, separa is, uh, a gossip separates the best of friends. I don't know if you've experienced this, but sometimes someone who was the closest to you later becomes your worst enemy, and they spread things about you. And boy, it hurts, doesn't it? I don't care how much we say. I don't care what they say. doesn't affect me, sticks and stones, but it does hurt, doesn't it? And if you've ever been the subject of it, that's the reason why so often when I meet with people and I find them just sort of vomiting the 411 about someone else, in a hurtful manner, I'll go, hey, have you ever had someone talk about you like this? I mean, do you, do you know, remember the feeling. And I think before we gossip, we need to consider, how did that make me feel? Because everybody, there's plenty of critics out there that are going to share information about your life that they, they don't even know the full story. They don't even know a percentage of the story. They don't know who you are, what you've been through, yet they want to share information about you, and it hurts. And, and even people that you don't like that share information about you, it still hurts. And it bothers us. And I think we need to keep that in our mind, especially if we have ourselves a propensity to share junk about somebody else. But who else does it hurt? This is a unique one, though, because you've never thought about this. But as I studied Scripture, you know what I found? I found that God holds the listener just as accountable as he does the person who is sharing the junk. Isn't that crazy? So who else does it hurt? Gossip hurts the listener. Look at this. Proverbs 17, 4 says, wrongdoers, that's, that's people who desire to live in a sinful lifestyle a wrecking ball of sorts, destroying other people's lives. It says, wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. You know what I learned a long time ago? The person that keeps walking into your life going, hey, I just want to tell you, you know, you know what they're saying about you and your church and your family? You know what they're saying about your business? You know what they're saying about, you know, the way, you know, some stuff that you're, do you know what they're saying? That person that's constantly bringing that to you, be suspect of that person. It's no accident that that person has all that information. They're not innocent in that. No, they love it. They love to, the turbulence and turmoil. So often people's self-image is so degraded and so small, they can't feel good about themselves until you feel bad about your circumstance. And so they love to bring that information to you. And I learned a long time ago, the person that's got too much information about the bad junk being spread about me is probably someone who's part of it. And sometimes you have to just kind of shut that down. But when people bring junk to you, notice what it goes on to say. It says, liars pay, pay close attention to slander. That means that the person who's, who's letting that download come into them 
loves the exaggeration. I learned this. People who exaggerate love to share the exaggerations with other people who exaggerate. And so when you find yourself having all this information about everybody else and you're right there in the middle of the rumor mill, you need to qualify yourself for a second because the Bible says you're a person who likes that sin lifestyle. You're a person who loves to exaggerate or lie. And that should cause us to go, wait a second, God, that's not the person I want to be. That's not the person Jesus died for me to be. I I need to step away from that. I can't live that out. Incidentally, whatever you listen to, whatever you permit to be said to you, you're promoting to the people around you. I think every single one of us carries two buckets with us in every conversation, a bucket of water and a bucket of gasoline. And depending on where you are, when someone brings some junk to you to set a fire to try to burn down somebody else's life, you got a bucket of water to put it out right then. But when you don't, you really poured gasoline on it and you made it worse. We have just as much responsibility when people are talking to us about someone else as the person who has the information to share with you. And so often we're intimidated. We're scared to say anything. You want to know why? Because because gossips are like terrorists. They kind of have this sort of, this image about them that is like, hey, you're on the inside because I'm sharing information about so-and-so. And And you know, it's kind of cool when, when we're together against this person, but you're kind of afraid because what happens later when you upset that person, they go and tell something to somebody else about you and you're outside of the loop. But I'm going to share with you in just a minute two questions that you're going to start asking people that are sharing with you junk that don't need to be shared. Two questions that's going to shut it down. They're, they're going to have their mouth open, food falling out. I mean, it's, it's going to shut it down. I promise you, you're going to see that. So it hurts the listener. But gossip also hurts the speaker, the person who's sharing it. Look at this. When arguing with your neighbor, don't betray another person's secret. Others may accuse you of gossip, and you will never regain your good reputation. I love that word reputation. You know what the word reputation means? It means what you do in repu- repetition. And I want to ask you one simple question before you just submit to this lifestyle of gossip. What do you want to be known for? We tend to be known for the things that we do most often. What do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known as a gossip? Because incidentally, for many of you who suffer from shallow relationships, and you can't understand why you don't have deeper friends and people that go the extra mile with you, you want to know why? Because you're not trustworthy. You're constantly sharing junk about somebody else. You're stabbing people in the back. And you know what? Where there's no trust, there can be no depth to a relationship. The very thing that you hunger for, the kind of relationships that sustain the soul of a human being, you don't have access to because you're constantly gossiping about somebody else. The truth is is that we have to learn how to build trust up. And trust is built when often you just keep your mouth shut. You don't have to share that stuff. What do you want to be known for? What is Chick-fil-A known for? Chicken. Why? Because they do chicken all the time right? Holland Bottoms Farms, what, what are they known for? Strawberries. It's that time of year, isn't it? I'll go by there every, I, I, I can't wait. Anytime I go down 321, I'm looking over there, I'm going, hey, they got boxes out there? You know, people out there throwing elbows for strawberries. Why? Because they're, the, they're like the crispy cream of fruit, man. The light's on, man. I got to pull in there. I'll be wrestling some of those ladies. Get back. I'm getting me a box of those strawberries. That's what they're known for because that's what they do. Do you want to be known? The legacy of your life, do you want it to be that she always had junk to say about somebody else? He was always destroying somebody else, tearing somebody else down. Is that what you want to be known for? I don't think so. I really don't think that that's where you want to be. And, and I hope that that's not where you want to be. So how do we lock down the rumor mill? How do we get, I'm going to give you, two, get ready, two questions. It's going to shut some people down, I promise you. First of all, we have to guard our ears. And I give the responsibility to the listener first, okay? Because I can't tell you as a pastor how often people come to me. Now listen, I don't believe it's a rumor when someone cares about somebody else and they say, hey, I saw this going on and I didn't know what to do. What should I do? That's not a rumor. It's not a rumor when someone comes to you and shares a prayer request on a a card. That's not a rumor. When you have this desire for this other person's life to be radically changed by the goodness of Jesus, that's not a rumor, y'all. That's not a rumor. Because we live in a day and age right now that if you share something that upsets somebody else, that's wrong. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that, that, that if you have your heart in the right place and you have a desire for someone to grow. Now, listen, I think there's been times, if we're honest, that rumors have been disguised as prayer requests. Isn't that true? You know, I just wanted you to start praying for so-and-so because you know what I heard? I heard that, uh, you know, she's uh, doing a little, you know, she's working late. I don't think she's working. Right? You've been there? 
And, and I'm not talking about that, but what I am saying is this, is that God tells us to include other believers in the struggle that's going on in somebody else's life. That's what intercession is about. And, but your heart has to be right. I say check your heart before you open your mouth. Where's my heart at? Do I really want her or his life to grow? Do I want their marriage to be, to be better? Do I want them to find the peace and joy that I found in Jesus? Before, you need to check that before you share that information. You need to make sure that's where it is. So, so you have to guard your ears. So here's the two questions. When someone comes to you with information, they're about to download some stuff onto your hard drive that you don't know whether or not you ought to listen to or not, here's two questions you ask them. Number one, here's number one question. And I ask this all the time. Why do I need to know this? You want to offend somebody? Ask that question. When they're in full steam, let me tell you. What, let me, let me, let me, you know, can I tell you what he was doing? Let me tell you what he was doing. I saw him come out of Hold on. Why do I need to know this? Why are you telling me this? You ought to see the look. They're like, Err. I was in the middle of my movie. What, what do you mean? Why? Well, there needs to be a reason. Why do I need to know this? Second question, you ready? Have you talked to them directly about this? I love asking that question. It's like a fresh spiritual slap. Psh, what? Yeah, have you talked to them? Because, because I'm going to show you a verse of Scripture that's going to teach you that, you know what God tells us to do? He tells us not to go around and tell everybody else, but we go to them. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus and have healthy relationships. You know what? You don't have to second guess the person who's willing to come and look you in the face and go, hey, here's something I saw and I want to talk to you about it. I, I just want to, I want to have that conversation. I know confrontation frightens us sometimes, but you know what? Healthy relationships, part of a healthy relationship is the willing to confront. The willingness to confront. And you know what? You go to them. Why do I need to know this? And have you talked to them about it? And then you can follow that up by saying this. If you haven't talked to them about it, I don't want to hear any more about it. You go talk to them first. And then we'll have a conversation about it. Now, I do have people sometimes will come to me and say, I didn't know what to do. What should I do? And I'll direct them. You know, that's not rumor. It's rumor when someone's giving you the... You know what's rumor. Come on. You know what rumor is when someone's got some junk that they're trying to pin on somebody else and they want to feel better about themselves because they're tearing somebody else down. You just say, hey, look, why do I need to know that? Have you talked to them about it? Because the best pathway for a resolution and the greatest opportunity for a relationship or, or the wrong that's, that's there to be righted is if that person is discussed, whatever's happened is discussed directly with the person that it affects. Talk to them. Have you talked to them about it? Matthew 18, 15, listen to this. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. Now, this is talking about when it happens directly to you, but it's the same principle when you go directly to that person. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Man, you know what? Our objective very often is not that that person's better off. Our objective is to make ourselves look better or to get back at that person because we're kind of mad at them. We're angry. We're bitter. We're vengeful or whatever. But God says that's not the way we're supposed to live, and that's not our objective. Our objective is for people to know Jesus more. It's our objective is for people to live in harmony with God. Our objective is for their life to be better because God loves them. How do we know God loves them? Jesus died for them. That's what he did. So I want them to be better. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have conversations that enhance their life, that develop and grow them. But you know what? Very often I need to go to them directly. That, that, that very often is the first move that needs to happen. Look at this, Proverbs 20 and 19 says, A gossip goes around telling secrets, <laughs> so don't hang around with chatterers. A bass fish, is, as some of you know, and one of the baits we use is called a chatterbait. A chatterbait has a, a weird blade on the front of it, and it vibrates the water real heavy. It just puts off a lot of vibration. You know, some of us are hanging around a group of people that put off a lot of vibrations, negative vibrations. They're chatterers. They're like a chatterbait. Man, it, they're putting off a bunch of junk. Some of you need to evaluate the people that you're hanging with. Is that the relationship I need to be in? If I can't correct them, if, I, if they're not going to turn the corner on, do I need to be in the middle of that? Do I need to be part of the wrecking crew tearing down other people's lives? And I would say you don't. That's certainly far from what God wants you to be doing with your life, and that's certainly not the reason why Jesus gave his life for you. Let me give you the second thing, locking down the rumor mill. second thing is this, close your mouth. <laughs> Isn't that great? This, you don't have to say a lot. There's a lot of stuff you just don't need to say. Don't participate. Yeah, maybe you know something. And maybe there's this tinge of revenge or whatever that, that jumps in our heart and this bitterness maybe that's there. And we want to share it with somebody because it makes us feel good. But don't. Just be quiet. Look at this. this. This should be a life verse for some of us. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. That's all some of us needed. We can go home now. We got all the Jesus we needed today. My life just changed, right? It says, and you will stay out of trouble. 
There's a lot less trouble in that. You know, there's a big contrast between gossip and the gospel. You know what gossip is? Gossip says, I'm strong when I make somebody else out to be weak. I, I'm somebody when I make, try to make somebody out to be nobody. I, I, I can stand up strong and I can stand tall when I push somebody else down. That's what gossip says. But the people who live by the gospel, you know what the gospel says? The gospel says, I'm weak, but he's strong. Jesus is strong. It's not about pushing somebody else down. It's not about destroying somebody else. It's not about stepping on somebody else's shoulders or pressing somebody in the dirt. No, no. The gospel says, I'm weak. I'm a nobody. You know what's funny? It's kind of weird to gossip about somebody else that, you know, when we look down our nose at people, it's, it's hard to look down your nose at somebody when you're eye level with them. When you realize that we all have our junk, don't we? I mean, you know, if you knew everything about me, you wouldn't come to church. You've heard me say this. You wouldn't come to church here. But if we knew everything about you, we wouldn't let you in, right? I mean, let's just be honest. Everybody is a 10 in some area, but we're a zero in another area. I mean, there's secrets everybody has. There's embarrassing things that everybody has been through. There's dumb decisions that we've all made that God loved us in spite of those. That's the beauty of Jesus, right? I mean, that's the beauty of Christ. And see, the gospel says, I acknowledge the fact that I'm weak. Not that I have to live in weakness. I acknowledge the fact that I'm weak, but I'm made strong because he's strong. I can live strong. Why? Because he's strong. I don't, have to, I don't have to build myself up by tearing somebody else down. That's not the avenue to greatness in the work of God. In fact, the Bible says, if anybody among you wants to become great, make them a servant. They must become a servant. In other words, Jesus said, if you want to you stand tall, then get on your knees. If, if you want to be somebody, you don't have to tear somebody else down. Just lift Jesus up and lift other people up at the same time. What a powerful way we would live. I, I really believe, and, and I believe this strongly, I believe that gossip has probably done more damage to our work as a church body than just about anything else. I think we talk about each other too much. I think we tear each other down. I think we're jealous. I think we're intimidated. I think there are times that our self-image is fractured and we're not living out the gospel. Instead, what we're doing is we're, we're you know, talking about somebody else. I think social media has made it easy. It's so weird to me when I look at posts that people post and they're just bad-mouthing somebody else. All that is is public gossip, y'all. That's all it is. And I think you and I need to live above that. I believe Jesus didn't die so that you and I can tear somebody apart and, and pick out all their flaws. But instead, I think Jesus called us to live in a way that we interrupt the mess that's happening in somebody else's life if we can so that the goodness of Jesus can saturate in and their life can be lifted up and live in harmony with Christ. That's how important our job is. We don't have time for the other stuff. You don't have time to be tearing somebody down. You just don't have time for that. And you wasn't made for that. And it's not going to benefit us anyway. The gospel, I'm weak, but Jesus is strong. How good he's been to me. See, Jesus knows everything. Isn't that crazy to think about? I mean, just think about it for a second. He knows every thought I've had. And I got some thoughts that I just go, oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. I can't believe I had that thought. I've, I've done some things that, I, man, how embarrassing that is, how ridiculous that is, yet Jesus knows about it. And you know what he didn't do? He didn't gossip about me. He said, I love you. Bud, you're, you're my son. I don't, I, 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 come on, we can do better than that. I'm going to help you. Let's walk together. And let me, let me show you a better way. That's what Jesus has done for all of us. And you know what? There should be a certain level of gratitude. And what's crazy is if Jesus has done that for us, how dare us tear somebody else down? And you know what? Let's don't participate in that. Let's, let's kill that stuff. Let's kill those, that urge that we have. Let's, let's, let's destroy the idea that I have a right to somehow wreck somebody else's life. It's crazy that we can see the motive in murder, isn't it? You can see the motive, when, but, but it's hard to, to spot it in slander. I mean, if someone keys your car, you go, my gosh, how dare somebody do something so awful? But you'll key somebody's character, and it doesn't bother you a bit. You know, someone could, could commit arson on your house and burn your house, and you think, golly, that's horrible. What a crime it is. Yet we can gossip and burn down somebody's career, and we don't, it doesn't seem to bother us. It should bother us. Should we shouldn't participate in that at all. We should be the kind of people that are trustworthy. We should be the kind of people that the words that come out of our mouth, we realize how powerful they are. The Bible says our tongue has the ability to tear down things, but it also has the ability to build things up. Let's speak life. 
Let's be the kind of people, hey, you know what? Is there hard information that needs to be shared? Absolutely. And here's one of the things I don't want you to leave here going, oh, that means that I shouldn't do prayer requests. That means I shouldn't talk, get Christian counsel. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get your heart right before you start doing those things. Get your heart right. Make sure that what you're saying isn't so that you can scud missile somebody else. That's not what this is about. It's something very different. I want you to bow your heads with me, and let's just take a second. Let's inventory this, and let's figure out what God wants us to do with it. Maybe right now, you're like me. This week, I realized that there have been times that I had been hurt by somebody, that I had been angry with somebody, And you know what? Maybe it was justified. Maybe 100% it was justified. But you know what I did? I didn't handle it well. Instead, what I did was, I did the very thing that that the Bible says don't do. I tore them down with my words. I talked about them to somebody else. Not so that their life would be benefited, but so that so that I could get it off my chest, so I could feel better. There have been times when when people who have hurt me have gone through a difficult time, and in the background. I sort of laughed. That's not the character of Jesus. That is not the pathway that God has called us to. We are to be different, friends. We are to be a totally different, not living naturally, but living supernaturally. We are not called to be destroyers, but we are to be people who broker peace and reconciliation. We are to be people who build others up. We are to be trustworthy with with information. We need to put the fire out instead of propagating it. So maybe this maybe today you go, wow, you know what I got that. There's some junk. I need to deal with we'll deal with it. The beauty of Jesus is repentance, turn to God and live a new way. Isn't that isn't that great? And that's what you have a chance to do. For some of you right now, you've never actually responded to the good news that God sent His Son to die in your place as your substitute on a cross. He was buried and on the third day raised from the dead. You've never responded to that. Today's your day. This is not about joining a religion or a denomination. This is not about joining a church. This is about you saying yes to the forgiveness that God has wanted to give you your whole life. And if you're ready for that, why don't you pray with me? Simple prayer. Silently, why don't you speak to God? Why don't you say something like this? Say, Lord, I recognize I need you. God, I don't need to go through life without you. I don't want to go through life without you, God. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. I accept your forgiveness that you purchased for me. Take control of my my life today, God. I put it in your hands. And teach me how to live, God. Thank you for saving me. I offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, for each one of us in this room, God, I know all of us have been the subject of gossip. Maybe we've been talked about. Maybe we did the talking. Or maybe we did the listening. God, whatever role that we've played at different times in our life, God, I pray we repent of it. I pray we turn away from it, God. I pray we realize that that is so corrosive, especially to the relationships within the church, God. Father, so often churches are torn apart because of the ways that we talk about and how we're jealous and bitter and and we have this envy and all this other junk that rips us apart. God, may we say no today to that. May we say we're going to live differently. We're going to live like Jesus. We're not willing to participate in those conversations any longer, God. Maybe we have a history of it, but but, but by the power of Jesus and by the grace of God, Father, we're not going to live that way anymore. You've pointed it out to us, God. We see it. We hear it. Our soul drinks that in. And, Father, we choose today to live differently. Father, thank you for bringing truth to us. Thank you for confronting us, God, where we need to be confronted. God, help us to be life givers, Lord. Each one of us, God. Thank you. Father, I pray for every person in this room. Give them strength, God, this week to be a light for you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for everything. Most of all, God, we give you thanks for Jesus. Lord, we offer this prayer. Celebrate your presence in our life. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.